Hi guys, it's John from Real Blue Custom Rods and today we're going to learn a little bit about color theory basics and the color wheel like this one that I have here. Uh, and really the reason why I wanted to talk about that is because it helped kind of give you or show you that it's something that you can use um, you know if you're having problems figuring out like what colors you should put together when you're doing some of your thread work um, this could help you figure out your color choices um, to make sure that they're complementary um, uh, or harmonious, if you will, uh, and, and they don't clash. Now, as you know, most people usually use a color wheel uh, when they're painting or when they're mixing colors, you know, something, uh, you know, physical, like they're mixing liquids or mixing paints. Um, but I really thought that, you know, if you understood how a color wheel works, um, it, you, it would help you ma basically make some choices um, when looking at the different types or the different colors of thread um, that you may have or that you may be considering uh, and using. First, let's talk about the five types of colors. All right, so you have your primary colors and your primary colors basically, um, you know, if you did not know your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, that, those are your three primary colors. Um, and basically, why are they your primary colors? Because you can't make red, yellow, and blue by mixing any other colors, right? Um, second, you have your secondary colors. And your secondary colors are orange, green, and violet, uh, each made by mixing, you know, two of the three primary colors. So again, you know, if you mix, uh, you know, red and blue, you get violet. If you mix yellow and blue, you get green. If you mix red and yellow, um, you get orange, right? So um, those are your secondary colors. Um, tertiary colors are the six, uh, excuse me, there are six tertiary colors basically. Um, and each one can be made by mixing one primary color with an adjacent secondary color. Okay, and then you have um, warm colors and then you have um, cool colors, right? And so your on this particular color wheel here will help show you which one are your warm and which one are your cool colors. So when we start here with red, violet, um, all the way to yellow, the, the color wheel tells us that these are our warm colors <clears throat> excuse me the color wheel tells us that you know red violet all the way to yellow are our warm colors and our cool colors are violet to yellow green and again it has an arrow here and here and it shows you where those cool colors are at all right so if i were mixing colors on the front side of this um this color wheel if i wanted to mix colors um again if i was working with paint this color wheel will help me determine what colors I would need to mix to make the desired color. So, um, you know, here at the top, you have your colors. And then here at this upper half of the inside portion of the color wheel, you have second color. So you have your primary colors plus white and black. And then basically all you do is move that around. So if I have red with red, right? of course that color is gonna be red. And you know, if I just leave it the way it is, if I add yellow to red orange, I get this shade of color. If I add orange and blue, I'm gonna get kind of a gray. If I add white and yellow orange, I'm gonna get a lighter version of that yellow orange, um, basically a different tint of that one. Um, and then if I add yellow and black, I'm gonna get kind of a, you know, a pea green color. Um, you know, so it's basically a different, I'm getting a different shade of the yellow color, but let's try something different. So if I take, you know, the red and the green, right here, the red and the green, I'm gonna get this different, um, you know, slightly lighter than maroon color, blue, green, and yellow. I'm gonna make it more of a green. Um, blue, violet, and white. I'm going to get more of a lavender. It, again, a different tint of the um, of the blue-violet color. And then by adding black to violet, I get a different shade. So 
a different shade of that violet color. So that's really the front um, of the color wheel, right? So again, um, you know, it, it talks to us about our primary, secondary, tertiary, warm and cool colors. Um, it shows us, you know, again, our cool colors across the top, our warm colors across the bottom. Uh, and then it also shows us like if we're mixing a couple of colors, again, like if I'm putting two liquids together like paint, um, you know, I can just spin the wheel around, and, you know, and find out what color I come up with if I mix um, red, yellow, blue, white, or black with one of the colors on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. Now for rod building, I like to use the backside of the color wheel um, because this is really um, you know, the illustration of, of color relationships. Again, like I said earlier, um, you know, if I'm using, you know, colors within relationships to each other, the color scheme on the rod is harmonious or basically the color scheme on the rod makes sense and works. The colors don't clash and look kind of awkward um, and or weird. So what is a harmonious color scheme? Well, we have a few things that talk about uh, when, when we say harmonious color schemes. We're talking about monochromatic colors. We're talking about analogous colors. We're talking about complementary colors. We're talking about split complementary colors. We're talking about triad, tetrad, and or key colors. Okay, so let's talk about the first one I mentioned underneath the harmonious color schemes, right? So monochromatic. All right, so what is monochromatic? So let's go to the one of the primary colors. We're going to go to yellow, right? So right here at the top center, we're going to come to yellow. All right, so monochromatic, that means you're using any one of the um, tints, tones, or shades of the color that you're using, right? So if I use yellow and then I use, you know, a tint, a tone, or a shade of that color, um, yes, it's still yellow, but if I use a different uh, tint, tone, or shade of yellow, I have basically a monochromatic um, harmonious color scheme, right? And how do what what does tint, tone, and shade really mean? Well, tint is adding white to the color that you're working with. Tone is created by adding gray to the color that you're working with. So if I use tint or if I use, excuse me, if I use white uh, and add it, you know, use some white and add it to yellow, I'm going to get a different tint. If I add a gray color to it, I'm going to get a different tone. And then shade, if I add a black to the yellow, then I'm going to get a different shade of yellow. And of course, it all just depends on how much black or how much gray or how much white you're adding to the color that you're using, right? Or even how much that color it is. You know, if you go to orange right here, right? You see the same thing. So you have your pure color, your orange with a little bit of white, you get this tint here, a little bit of gray, you get this tone and a little bit of black, you get this shade right here. So analogous colors, all right? Now analogous colors basically are when you use any colors that are adjacent to each other in the build. So if I were, let's go to, Let's come around here to the pure color of blue, right? So analogous, right? So I'm using colors that are adjacent to each other. So I'm using at least two colors that are adjacent to each other, but no more than five, right? So if I use blue, blue, violet, and violet, these colors, all right, will look good. They'll have a harmonious color scheme to them because they're analogous colors. So if I use blue, blue, violet, and violet, those three colors on a rod by themselves would look great. Or if I use blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and violet, um, those colors would look great. Or even if I use green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and violet, those five colors, one, two, three, four, five, would be analogous and would have a harmonious color scheme to them. Um, complementary colors. So complementary colors uh, basically are when you use any two colors directly opposite of each other on the wheel, right? So for example, if I use blue here, I go directly across from it and that complementary color becomes orange, right? So blue, 
orange, and those are my complementary colors. So I could, if I wanted to use just two colors on the fishing rod so far, right? If I wanted to use two colors of thread on a rod build, I could do, you know, so far what we talked about, I could do a monochromatic color. So I could use blue with a different uh, tint tone or shade of that blue. I could use uh, two analogous colors like blue and blue violet or blue and blue green. Um, or I could use complementary colors, meaning blue and the color that's opposite, uh, directly opposite from it on the color wheel, which is orange. So those two colors would go as well. As for split complementary color scheme, um, how you achieve that is by using any color with the two colors on each side of its complement. Example, if I have the green with the red orange and the red violet right here. So uh, the split complementary is my green is my primary color, right? So if green is my primary color, my, spit, my split complementary would be uh, red, orange, or red, violet. Triad, try using three colors that are equally spaced from each other on the wheel. Example here, right, would be like orange. Let's just go, let's move to this primary color here of orange, or excuse me, a pure color of orange. Um, so let's say example of triad uh, would be orange, violet, and green, right? Or if it was red, it would be red, blue, and yellow, right? Well, our primary colors, let's try something different. Let's go to violet, pure color of violet, then it would be green and orange or blue violet, right? Blue violet, yellow green, and red orange. So that would be a triad. Now let's go a little further uh, and discuss tetrad colors. So you can achieve a tetrad harmonious color scheme by using a combination of four colors on the color wheel that are two sets of complements, right? Meaning, um, I could use, uh, if I set my pure color to blue right here, a tetrad would be green and yellow and violet and red. That would be a tetrad. Or I could use, um, you know, blue, green, yellow, violet, and red, orange. That would be that as well. That would be a tetrad as well. And then lastly, there's your key color, right? And basically your key color is your predominant color um, that you're working on. So if you're doing a painting, um, the color that you use the most of would be your key color, um, you know, in custom rod building. If you're building your own fishing rod, the key color would really be the color of thread that you use the most of. So, uh, and then, you know, the great thing about this color wheel, um, when you're talking about um, split complementaries, tria, tetrad. Um, you can get all of that information right here in the center. It makes it super easy for you um, to use when you're trying to lay out your color schemes for your fishing rods. So I hope this video gives you a better understanding of uh, the color theory basics and how you can apply this theory to your color scheme during your next uh, rod build or your painting project. Please hit the like button and share this video with someone if you found it very useful. And make sure you subscribe and watch this next video here. Thanks for supporting Real Blue Custom Rods and until next time.